nothing happens until something moves. The unofficial motto of the Transportation Corps is a fitting tribute to one of the smallest branches of the Army. Success in war requires transportation onto and in the battlefield. Before the combat arms branches can take the fight to the enemy, the Transportation Corps has to get them there. This is held true for as long as this nation has fought in battle. In colonial times, equipment and supplies were often carried in wagons hired by the quartermaster. This practice of hiring men and vehicles to transport the army continued during the American Revolution and into most of the 19th century. During this period, the army was too small to require much specialization. So transportation requirements during peacetime were managed by the quartermaster department. When war was declared against Mexico in May 1846, the army was faced with its first amphibious operation against a foreign country. Troops and supplies gathered for the expedition and traveled on U.S. naval vessels to the Mexican coastal city of Veracruz. The landing there was a great success. Within a few hours, 10,000 soldiers landed on the beach without the loss of a single man or boat. The Civil War brought numerous changes in the methods of military transportation. The most significant was the use of the railroad. Beginning with the Battle of First Manassas, railroads were used to rapidly transport men and supplies. The capture of rail centers was considered a major strategic objective. Boats were also used to carry men and materiel to the front. Many waterborne expeditions were sent against the Confederacy along major riverways. Wagons continued to be necessary to keep the armies in the field adequately supplied, so thousands were procured. During the Civil War, responsibility for transportation continued with the Quartermaster, with the Corps of Engineers, as well as with the newly established Military Railway Service. In 1898, the Spanish-American War created new transportation problems for the Army. Having had no prior experience with the rapid embarkation of troops, the Army soon found itself almost at a standstill due to crowded railroad depots, limited ports, and inadequate shipping. To alleviate these problems, the Army Transport Service was established and given the mission of providing for regularly operated military sea transportation. Although the war quickly ended, the Army Transport Service continued to provide military transport to the Philippines and other acquired Pacific possessions. These experiences were of considerable value in solving the logistical and transportation issues of World War I. The first months of the American Expeditionary Forces' participation in World War I clearly demonstrated the difficulties in sending large forces overseas by ship. By chartering merchant vessels, cooperation from the Allies, and the construction of new shipping, the job was done. Once in France, American forces quickly began to construct and operate rail lines in support of military operations. At the same time, the use of motor transport was put to its first real test. The Motor Transport Corps was created in 1917 and was charged with the supply, repair, and operational control of cargo and passenger carrying vehicles. Despite the increased use of motor transport, the Army still relied heavily on animal power. The German Blitzkrieg in 1939 and 1940 pushed the United States into developing a more mechanized Army, resulting in the purchase of every available truck as the United States was pulled into another world war. World War II, with its many fronts and theaters of operations, and the development of a highly mobile, mechanized form of warfare, necessitated the integration of all transportation services and functions within a single agency. Thus, the Transportation Corps was established on 31 July 1942, and was given the mission to direct, supervise, and coordinate all transportation functions of the War Department. The new Transportation Corps became responsible for the operation of ports of embarkation, the operation of troop transport ships, the operation of railroads, the use of motor transport in delivering troops and cargo, both in the United States and abroad, and the development of equipment to answer specialized transportation needs. Amphibious operations required the use of new forms of landing craft, such as the landing craft personnel, landing craft mechanized, and the versatile amphibious truck, or duck. 
the Red Ball Express supported the Allied drive into Germany as one famous example of the reliability of trucks to support fast-moving military operations. Some vehicles, such as the four-wheel drive Jeep, helped to finally replace the Army Mule as the transport of choice in rough terrain. The trusty Mule does continue as the Army mascot and a part of Army folklore. In 1948, during the Soviet blockade of West Berlin, Transportation Corps truck companies were instrumental in getting food and fuel into Berlin by carrying provisions to and from the aircraft that were flown into the city. Operation Vittel's success forced the Soviets to lift their blockade. The Korean War required the Transportation Corps to keep UN forces supplied through three winters. By the time the ceasefire was signed on 27 July 1953, the Transportation Corps had moved more than 3 million soldiers and 7 million tons of cargo. It was also during this conflict that the helicopter was first employed on a large scale. Used to transport men and supplies to remote areas and for the evacuation of wounded personnel, it proved its versatility for both military and civilian purposes. In February of 1965, the Military Traffic Management and Terminal Service was activated as the single manager for military traffic management, land transportation, and common user ocean terminals. It was later renamed as the Military Traffic Management Command. It was responsible for centralized traffic management for the Department of Defense. The Vietnam War saw the most diversified assortment of transportation units ever assembled. Army transportation continued to improve on land, sea, and in the air. For over a decade, the Transportation Corps provided continuous support for American and Allied forces in an unimproved tropical environment using watercraft, amphibian vehicles, motor trucks, and aircraft. Large amounts of supplies were brought to Vietnamese ports by both commercial and military shipping. Helicopters carried larger loads, giving the Army greater mobility. Trucks were still an essential means of distributing supplies, but the enemy threat to convoys required a unique solution. Soldier-built gun trucks were created and then standardized to protect vulnerable truck convoys. In a post-war review of logistics, Lieutenant General Joseph M. Heiser, Jr. noted, for the first time in modern history, the U.S. Army was required to establish major logistic bases in a country where all the areas were subject to the enemy's observation and hostile fire, with none of the terrain under total friendly control. Despite this noted handicap, Army transportation rose to the challenge, which ultimately resulted in new capabilities far beyond what a decade before had considered possible. In 1990, the Transportation Corps faced one of its greatest challenges with the onset of the first Gulf War. During Operation Desert Shield and Operation Desert Storm, the Army Transportation Corps was tasked with sustaining two corps of soldiers. Not once were operations constrained by the inability of transportation to deliver timely logistic support. The September 11, 2001 attacks on the World Trade Center towers and the Pentagon launched the United States into a war on terrorism. Operation Enduring Freedom, the invasion of Afghanistan, began just four weeks later. On March 20, 2003, U.S. forces crossed the Kuwait-Iraq border. Transportation soldiers moved along increasingly dangerous supply routes in convoys, bringing needed supplies to the forward bases. The Transportation Corps opened up the airline of communication into Afghanistan, and until 2008, a single movement control battalion managed all movement in regional command east. As the number of brigade combat teams increased in Afghanistan in 2006, the Transportation Corps managed ground convoy operations as well. After the capture of Baghdad, the focus turned to stabilization of the country and the rebuilding of Iraq's infrastructure. With the changing mission, the war in Iraq became even more focused on the roads and the soldiers of the Transportation Corps. Once the enemy began attacking convoys, truck drivers responded with a now age-old solution of up-armoring their trucks. Gun trucks and mine-resistant vehicles were developed. Convoy security is now a permanent part of transportation doctrine. No matter how great the threat, the Transportation Corps delivered the goods. During Operation New Dawn, 
the Transportation Corps was responsible for moving all equipment out of Iraq by the December 2012 deadline. While transportation operations and vehicles have changed in size and scope, some things have remained the same. It is difficult to anticipate everything needed, so the Transportation Corps adapts and improves capabilities on the move. Lessons are learned and applied to the succeeding vehicles and operations for the next anticipated conflict. But despite all the changes and lessons learned, the mission remains the same. To deliver what is needed, where it is needed, when it is needed. Accordingly, the Transportation Corps is more than a slogan, the spearhead of logistics. It is a definition and commitment to purpose. For, in the words of Major General Jay Lane, commanding general of Fort Eustis, 1962 to 1965, nothing happens until something moves.